In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an over-the-range microwave with a wall vent. And we're going to do it right now. So I have my cabinets hung. This would also work if you are replacing a microwave. And this would also work if you're not venting a microwave. The instructions will be pretty much the same. The only difference is I am going to vent it right through the wall right here. Sometimes people vent through the cabinet and go up through the roof and they have this big pipe up here. But since I am able to, I'm going to take advantage of just being able to hide that pipe and go straight through the wall. So first thing I see is two person installation only. Hope they're not watching this video. But really guys, get some help. Don't hurt yourself. The good thing about this is they make this pretty easy. Give you all the hardware, got your templates here, and I've done maybe a hundred microwaves and they're all basically the same. This one is an LG, but like I said, they're all pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna run through how to install it and hopefully I'll make it easy for you. So first thing, I'm gonna show you these templates. There's one on this side. This is the wall template. It has your cutout for the vent. It also has where the bracket needs to go. And then if you flip it, this is for the bottom of the cabinet, which will be where this gets attached to. So I'm gonna start with the wall template. And there's these dotted lines right here that you need to cut out for whatever reason. I don't know why they couldn't have just made this piece of paper to that dotted line, but hey, that's not me. So just cut along the dotted lines all the way around. Before you start your installation, make sure that you have a minimum of 30 inches between the cabinets that you're hanging it to. This is a 30 inch cabinet. I made sure to make them plumb so that right here is 30 inches as well. This is a pretty tight squeeze. This is like 29 and 7 eighths or even 29 and 15 16 so it's going to be a really tight fit so make sure you have 30 inches another thing to check is your local building codes you're going to have a minimum and a maximum requirement for where this can be as far as height from the top of the stove this is an electric range i'm venting right out the wall there's a door close to that, I don't know if I could even do that with a gas range. So if I end up getting a gas range, I might have to go through here and then go out the roof. But that's a different story. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Just check with your codes and make sure that whatever you're gonna do is gonna work for your area. I have my template that I cut along the dotted lines and they tell you to mark center right here, but this is really easy to tell what is center, just have an even gap on each side. If your cabinets are out of plumb, make sure you hold the template out of plumb with the cabinets. Basically, hold it tight to the top, and then I wanna look on each side, make sure I have an even space. And then they tell you to tape this to the wall, but as long as you hold it in place, I don't think it's necessary. And I'm gonna take a scratch all and I'm gonna mark each corner of the wall vent first. Hold it in place so it doesn't move around. Just a little mark. And then on the bottom shows this bracket. It's gonna tell you where to put your bolts. So you mark one right here, that's A. And then on the other side, you mark that one. And then I just take a pencil and mark one line right at the bottom over here. So I know that's the bottom of the bracket. And then do the same thing on the other side here. One little line. And you can take this down. So now I'm going to take my bracket and hold it to where I marked those holes and then hold it on the lines that I drew on the bottom. 
So my bracket is on the lines that I marked on the bottom. I made sure it was even from the bottom of the cabinet to the bottom of the bracket. And you can see the holes where they tell you you must put bolts, either lag bolts or toggle bolts in those holes or this will not be supported properly. My problem is, is the studs are off from that. So in order to do what they say in the manual, like I said, I've done maybe a hundred of these and I have moved the bolts over like this one is three inches away from the stud um, and it's been fine. These little hooks are what actually holds up the microwave. So what I'm gonna do is put a toggle bolt in there like they want you to in the manual and a toggle bolt there. And then I will get a lag bolt in that stud and that stud into this bracket. And then I'm not gonna worry about the middle because like I said, this hook and this hook is actually what holds the microwave up. Well, let's attach this bracket. So these are the toggle bolts that are supplied with the microwave and these are the lag bolts. Both very strong. I've used these so many times and they're awesome. So you need to take the bracket down in order to put these in. I took a half inch drill bit and this actually might not be big enough. I might need to kind of round out the hole, but there is some play in the bracket. So it's okay if I round out the hole a little bit. I'm just gonna hold it right at that mark, drill a hole. The same over here. Now you take the bolt off of the toggle on both of these. Now I can take my bracket and put one bolt through like this and get the toggle started over here. Make sure it's on there plenty. Same thing on this side. Make sure you're going the right way. It goes like this towards the wall. And then you can take your bracket. And squeeze them in. And then you're gonna feel them kind of open up in there. And you take a drill and hold this bracket tight like this so it pulls those toggles against the drywall. Tighten these up. I'm not gonna go too crazy. I wanna line these up on my marks. Like I said, there is some play here with those bolts and these holes. And that's looking good. Tighten those. Now I can install my lag bolts, and it's a good idea to pre-drill these. These are pretty thick, so I'm going to pre-drill right here. And I'm going to use a number three tip. It's just one step up from the normal number two Phillips because these are a little bigger. And attach this. And that, sorry to say it, is not going anywhere. I think I say that too much. Sweet, moving on. Now I'm gonna wanna connect the dots of where the wall vent is going and the marks I made. Right on the wall, obviously you're gonna wanna stay away from a stud. I was the one that hung these cabinets, so I made sure that there was not gonna be a stud where this wall vent is, but I'm pretty darn close. I think I just made it. We'll find out when we cut this. And of course, what tool would I ever use other than my favorite tool, the oscillating tool, to cut this drywall? And no wire. 
there is a wire attached to this stud. I can feel it right there. Just gotta be careful, make sure there's no plumbing, there's no electrical, even before you cut this, because you're probably not gonna be able to put a wall vent in if that's the case, unless you move that stuff. But I am all set. Just gotta get this insulation out of the way for now. You can wear gloves if you don't want to be itchy. I am kind of notorious for not wearing gloves when dealing with insulation, as you guys always point out. So my apologies for that. It just doesn't bother me too much. So I'm just gonna cut it down the middle and I'm gonna push it down and push it up. Just tuck it in there just so we can see what's going on. And there's the outside of the house, with no obstructions. Now this is the wall vent that's actually gonna be going outside. I just wanna put it in here and see how we're gonna be on the outside. Just wanna make sure that we're gonna be good. You're gonna to want to have a little play there so you can line it up to the microwave once it's in. I think we're gonna be good. Now I'm gonna take a nice long pilot bit and drill nice and straight each of these four corners and go right out the side of the house. So I was kind of taking a closer look at this wall cap and it turns out this is kind of a piece of trash. <laughs> if you look right here, See this foam strip? It like barely seals this up. I feel like just the pressure of the house could push this out. They could get, you know, bees could come in here. Eventually this is not gonna be great. So I'm gonna go see if I can find a better wall cap locally so I can finish this job. That's better. This thing is serious. All welded construction. Got the bird cage here. That's nice. Way better than this one. I'll leave a link in the description over to this one if you want it. So now, take this screw out. I'm gonna connect the dots and cut this out. cut and this is the reason I dislike <laughs> dealing with cedar shake because it breaks I mean I hit that out pretty aggressively but <laughs> it does break super easy I have no idea how I'm gonna do this without it breaking I might end up having to rip off some of the siding because ideally let's say you have vinyl siding you cut this hole this is your piece of vinyl you take this piece up and then you put the flange or the vent in here so that the flange sits over here and then you put this piece on you cock it all in and you're done but i don't know how i'm gonna get the flange up in here between these two pieces of siding is where i want to go and then i'm just gonna have the flange overhang right here it doesn't have to be perfect because we are under an overhang a pretty big one but I do want to seal it up so it's airtight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vent and set it in there, but then I want to go inside and I've marked my center right here. And on the back side of the microwave, I know that the vent is really close up here. It's really tight. So I want this to sit as far up as it can, and then I want to center this. So where that hole is, is center. So I'm gonna put this where it is center, right there, and then go outside 
And I'm going to make a light pencil mark right here in the other side so I don't lose where my center is. And then I want to take this and lift it as far up as I can. And then I'm going to mark right here. I want this siding to sit just like that. And then I'm going to cut this siding back like this straight down and do the same thing on this side. So where I've already cut here, I'm actually going to use that as my line. There won't be much sitting over that flange, but I'm going to cock it in. Now what I have to attempt to do is pry this siding back a little bit so that I can get under it. See, it's cracking already. I uh, wish I had vinyl, but I'm planning on doing vinyl. Stay tuned. Oh, okay. it'll work. All right, so I took the wall vent back out and I wanna get back to install on this microwave. I wanna hang this up first, now that I know I'm good out there, and then I can install the vent from outside. All right, so let's prep this first. We have to move the blower. This basically has three different ways that it can vent. Right now, the way it is, is it's set up for self venting, which means the air is sucked in through the bottom, and then it comes in here and it blows out the top. Self-venting. Basically, it doesn't do anything. It just supposedly filters whatever comes up and then blows it back into your kitchen. The other way is up this way, which is for if you're going through the cabinet, maybe a roof vent, you can also do a wall vent doing it that way. And then the third, which is what I'm doing, is a wall vent right here. You'll see that it looks like this is blocked up, but these are just knockouts that you have to take off. That's what I'm gonna do, but first I'm gonna flip this blower. Let's get a couple screws right here, right here, and then this plate will come off. And then there's screws down here that you take out. That should loosen the motor. We can pull it up and you would spin it like this for if you're going through the cabinet to go out the roof or the wall. I'm gonna put this aside first and I'm gonna try and get these knockouts out of here. Bend this out. Those little tabs there. that and break it off. Now you would think that you just spin it like this and put it in, but what happens is now it's not lined up. So what you have to do is take this wire off of here and kind of reroute it because you have to take it like this and flip it and then put the wire back in here without damaging it. Move it around. There we go. And you can drop it down like that. And now it's lined up. And then you can put your two screws right here that hold the motor in. If you're doing this, you can skip this step if you're self-venting. Put this back in, like that. It goes underneath this right here, it locks in on the sides here. Put those screws back in, one in the motor, and one over here. Now I want to put this flange on that connects to the wall vent. Um, 
I don't know if I necessarily need this because the other one has a damper, but I think it's easier to take out afterwards than to put in. So I'm gonna put it in and if it causes me any issues, I can take it out afterwards through the outside, through the wall vent. But all this is very sharp. Might be a good idea to wear gloves. I'm just not practicing what I preach. There we go. There's two little holes right there that that goes into. Make sure it's going the right way. And then it slides in this right here. so that it's straight, it bends easily. Hooks in on the bottom. That looks good. Now I can put two screws right here. Okay, it's gonna look a little something like that with it sitting behind here. Screws in right here, and then it sits right on those tabs right there. And I wanna do one more thing before I put it up there. I'm gonna take this metallic tape. It's actually made for duct work, not duct tape, made for duct work. And I'm just gonna tape around these seams just to make it airtight. Peels off this paper. Ooh, don't roll on itself. Set it in here. That'll seal it right up. And this stuff makes a nice seal. I'm going to try and use this on the inside of the duct afterwards, too. Okay. So this is the template for the bottom of the cabinet. All it has really is the hole for the cord, and then it has two bolts that go in right here and here. So the cord would go in about here, and then the bolts here and here. Um, basically what you do is you measure the back here and figure out which line you need to use in order to use the template, but I actually don't ever use the template. I measure. So I measure the microwave. This is the bolt hole. That's the other bolt hole, and that's where the cord needs to go. So I measure from the back because this sits flush against the wall. I'll hold a level up this way, measure off of that to my center right here, and then the same thing with the sides. I check both sides because this is so tight against the cabinet, I can get a very accurate measurement. And then I measure to the center and drill all these holes. So that's what I'm gonna do. So you guys can definitely use the template. This is just how I've always done it. Get my first bolt hole right here. It's opposite, so it's gonna go over here. I put a piece of quarter inch, just like this, inch and a half. And this one, eight and eighth. And then the distance from the back. This. Like I said, if it's easier for you to use the template, you can do it that way. And there is a little tiny bit of play here with those bolts, but not much. Okay, got my marks where these holes are going. And I'm gonna take a pilot bit 
and just go from the bottom up, drill a hole. I don't want to drill the actual size straight up because it will blow out the cabinet up top and I don't want that. Even though I'm putting holes in it, let's try and make the holes nice. Now I can drill my holes from up top and that shouldn't splinter the wood out. So 3 8 drill bit for the bolts in the front here. This one's going to be a little tight. just want to do that much on the top to hopefully make it so it won't splinter and then I'll go from the bottom because it's going in at an angle and I don't want it to go in at an angle. Very carefully. Nice. They say to make a two inch hole for the cord, but I think that's a little excessive. I'm gonna do an inch and a half. And that should be plenty. Perfect. And one more important step that a lot of people forget is these crush blocks. What these do is they go just like this on the underside here, they match up with your hole and whatever the thickness is from your face frame to here. That's what you want to have. You do them on both sides where these bolts go. You do another one over here. And basically what they do is right here, you see how this has a kind of rectangular shape. If those blocks aren't in there, this is meant to pull up and squeeze tight against those blocks. If this isn't if the blocks aren't in there, this metal actually starts to bend up and then sometimes these nuts can actually just break. So don't do that. Make sure it all gets tightened together as a unit and put those blocks in. I'm gonna actually nail them up with a little tiny micro nailer, just like this, and drill down on this one. I couldn't do it on that one. That's why I pre-drilled it. So I'll put those in and then I'll hang the microwave. Line this one up. Okay. And this is the part that I really recommend you don't do by yourself because we're going to put it in we hook it on this lip first and then we put these bolts in and that's what holds it in so keep those bolts up there keep the screw gun up there as you're doing this you want to feed in the wire to the outlet and be careful this has to go in perfectly even. Make sure you get on those hooks. Okay. There we go. Got it. Push it up, feed that through. Make sure you start these by hand first, because you definitely don't want to cross thread them. Done that before too. Okay, 
so here's the deal. This is what it looks like out here. And it turns out that this vent is just shy. So they sell vents that are actually about 10 inches deep, and then you just cut it um, and match it up in here. But um, I didn't have any of those locally. So what I did was I got a little extension piece. I'm gonna use this to attach here first and I'm gonna bend these tabs up like this. I'm gonna put that extension on the outside of this one. I'm gonna take this damper off because I don't think I need it. I have the one on the wall vent that wasn't on there very good anyways. So I'll put that extension piece in. I'll tape it from the inside because I can lift that damper up. And then I'll put the wall vent in and I hate the way it looks with the siding and I have to patch that anyways. So I'm gonna do all that, insulate it nice on the inside, cock it all in, rip off the siding, patch it back in with new stuff, see if I can reuse some of this and then paint the whole thing and be done. Cause I wanna do it the right way, even though I'm doing vinyl siding over this afterwards. When I do the vinyl, I can just go right over this. But that is my new plan. Right about now, you might be saying, Matt, this is a lot of work. Why are you doing it this way? Why don't you just drill the holes, cut the hole out, put the thing in, and caulk around it? And you know what? I could do that. I have this big overhang. I have some wind-driven snow and rain, but nothing that would ever cause any kind of issues. So I definitely could do that. But the two reasons that I don't want to do it that way is... One, I want to show you what I would do in a situation where, if it was exposed to weather, how I would handle it. I want to take it back, take all that siding back down, and put the flange over that bottom piece of siding, and then overlap that flange with another piece of siding. You have to picture the rain falling down your house and where you want the water to go. So if it's on the siding above the flange, and then it hits the flange, and then from the flange, that other piece of siding, you don't want anything working its way back into the house. That's why I'm caulking behind the flange, and after I put the pieces on, I'm caulking around the siding, making it airtight, weathertight, everything. And the second reason is because this looks a thousand times better than if I just popped it on there without cutting any of the siding back. All patched in. No, I did not use plywood or home wrap to fill that hole in. I just sided right over it. Go ahead and leave some comments, because I know you will. It's all sealed up tight, caulked in, painted, sided to match. Once that dries, it should blend right in. And the important thing is, it works. And works really well. Don't forget to put your filters in underneath. One on that side, and one on that side. Give it the old tissue test. Nice. Man, that sucks. 
That is the most direct vent you can get for a microwave, straight through the wall. And you don't have to do it like I did. I just showed you what I did and you can use that information however you want. And it's really gonna depend on your siding and your situation. Whatever the case, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you. If you wanna see more videos like it, you can click hereish and hereish and check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. So you hold your template up like this, make sure there's an even gap. And then you can like mark this kid, mark this right here kid. And then blah, 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 I say some stuff that you probably don't care about. Yeah, you're good to go, you take it down and then you uh, go have a beer.